What's up guys, it's Gina. Welcome to another episode of UU Campaign. Um, before we get into it, uh, I want to apologize for there uh, not being a whole lot of uploads this week and for the weather, because like you guys may be able to hear it, because like it is raining cats and dogs outside. Um, it's crazy, but I, you know I can't really control the uh, can't really control either one of those because this week was finals week for me. But I am finally done. I'm out. But uh, I figured I should go ahead and get a UU campaign episode up because there my channel's been kind of dead this week. Anyway, um, we have. Oh, okay, so for those of you unfamiliar with the concept of UU campaign, if this is your guys' first episode, um, it is where we started off with three Pokemon, which um, was Suicune. Uh, Snorlax and Chestnut that we don't have anymore. Every time we win, we get to take a Mon from our opponent's team. Every time we lose, we have to give up a Mon. Right now, we have these six Pokemon with us, which is um, Standard Crocoon, Standard Curselax, um, Catching Z's the Crocodile, um, Frank Citro the uh, Bulky Rotom um, then we have Will Diaz the Crobat, and uh, we went ahead and added Mamoswine after last episode, who is uh, the Sorkinist, and for backups. Who we got for our backups? We actually have a lot. Um, we have Salmon, Sucario, Nidoking, Honchkrow, Mega Aggron, and P2, in addition to Tentacruel and Hydreigon, so we do have a lot of things to work with. Um, I'm super excited. Anyway, that is not the right team at all. I, I built a Arbok squad. Anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and grab a battle. I'm going to pause it till I get in one, and uh, I will catch you guys then. Um, this guy's a pretty cool team using Azelf. Um, Azelf can actually like pull off a nasty plot set now since Zam is gone, so that is something I do need to watch out for. Anyway, um, I do think I'm going to go ahead and lead off with Crocodile, because it does have a relatively beneficial matchup versus the majority of his team. If he does uh, go into Chestnut, that's not really that much of an issue, as he does lead with Azelf, which is nice. I'm just going to go straight away for the knockoff, um, hoping he's not like the light... If he's the Life Orb Energy Ball set, then I just knock him out turn one, which um, it appears he wasn't. He was some sort of lefty set. Um, but that's always good, because you know picking that off turn one is very nice. Nice, no rocks for him, at least for now, and uh, I do kind of force him into his chestnut, as uh, that is what he does go out into, so good plan his part. I'm just going to go out to Rotomo, because he can't do a whole lot to me, and I can just willow him, so, you know, things should work out here as he goes for the drain punch, and that did a little bit, wow, sick voice crack, that did a little bit more than I'm comfortable with, but... You know, we can play around these things. We tech those. Um, music is messed up. Fantastic. Anyway, and, and it's raining out. Like, what is this? Like, it is actually pouring. I'm looking out the window, and I cannot see out the window. That is how hard it is raining. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and click Volt Switch right here, because, you know, may as well. <laughs> um, I can pick up some free momentum, and by free momentum, I mean a cool 18%. And I can just go into Crobat, because Crobat does wall this thing pretty well. Um, if he does try to drain punch me again, it's not even an issue. I can defog away Hazard, so I think I'm in a pretty good position right now, because I will threaten him out. I could click U-turn, but I feel like getting these spikes off the field will be very, very important for me, especially because I do see a Crocodile sweep in our future, um, because... Once I can get a little bit of a moxie boost up, then there's not a whole lot he can do. I do need to keep Suicune healthy, though, because Sharpedo could pose a little bit of a problem, but overall, I'm not, like, too worried about anything. Um, as he stays in, good plan his part, and just gets up another spike, but this is a battle he's going to lose. Um, I kind of want to just click Brave Bird right here, because... Just to just for the sake of speeding this process up, and the fact that he will get a spike up out of this scenario no matter what, is he goes into Rotomo now. So you know, okay, fair enough. Um, he is lefties, which is actually better, a lot better for me, because I can go into Snorlax here and just start firing off some stock body slams. Um, if I can spread some para some paras that is always nice of course I, I don't think i can para wrote him up but he just goes for the wisp misses which is unfortunate um what does he have for this he, he, he has zero for snorlax so it's also looking like a snorlax sweep i have a couple ways i can win this game which you know i suppose there is better or, or like worse problems to have um but your boy brennan is hitting that weight room right now so um I, I do get one curse up, which is very nice. I think once I get a second, I can just click rest and uh, start winning because 
theoretically at plus two chestnuts should not be doing that much to me. If it is, I can always just switch out and save this thing for later. Um, which he does go into chestnut right here, but he is on a timer. Uh, he will get HP back uh, from Drain Punch, which is the only thing that's kind of a nuisance. But really at this point, um, he only has one special attacker left and it's kind of weak because it's defensive. So nothing really beats this. <laughs> um, we, yeah, that did 15%. He, yeah, he's also burned. So that I, I mentioned that earlier, but it was like, I was just thinking damage. Your boy hasn't played mons in a couple of days. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and click sleep talk right here because it's not an issue at all. We are resting on these people. We are sleeping on them. We are catching Z's. Ha! Jokes! Anyway, um, he just gets up another layer of spikes, which, you know, I, I think out of all those plays, that was maybe the worst possible that he could have done, but, you know, who am I to judge? Anyway, um, looking at what mods I could take from his team, because I'm, I'm pretty sure there's no way I can lose this, um, unless I just continually get rest, which is always amazing, but... We could get Chestnut back, which would be cool. I'm not sure how much it's going to help us if we get Chestnut back. Um, wouldn't be opposed to Arcanine, but Entei by and large is better. And we already have stuff to spread status. He goes into Gligar, which is fine. Um, we are just going to continue to curse. It is not an issue. Um, I'm actually going to Body Slam here just in case he's some weird Whirlwind set. Because I don't want that to become an issue. Or if he's Taunt. Like, Stallbreaker. He's SD. Cool. 80% chewed. Uh, he's lefties. Don't do this. You have a Violite as an option, but this is actually really cool um, because I've heard about people doing this, but and I've and I kind of want to make a team around it. Um, it was a lot better when Celebi was in the tier because um, it's not quite as good anymore. But SD pass into Mega Sharpedo, like things just die. It's so it's ugly. Anyway, we'll see what he decides to go into right here. I wouldn't be shocked to see Arcanine if it does have close combat. Um, he does go into Arcanine, gets the Intimidate off, which is kind of nice, but I will do 62%, I do get the Para, and he loves the item leftovers, apparently. Which, you know, I can kind of relate to, like, obsessing around one item, because a lot of the offensive teams I make, it's like, one Sashmon, f one Megastone, and four Life Orbs, but, <laughs> you know, it it's like, I'm just gonna go ahead and, uh, click Body Slam again, because it is my best possible play. I don't actually think I need to continue to curse anymore, I don't need to risk it. Um, because he just, like, straight up loses at this point, especially because Chestnut is severely weakened. He goes for the Flare Blitz. I did zero. They call me Thick Fat. <laughs> um, anyhow. Anyhow. Oh, uh, yeah, like... Snowlax is actually kind of hard to beat. Um, you kind of do need like a stall breaker or like a very very strong fighting type in order to take it down. But like, no duh, you need a fighting type to break through the Malin that's weak to fighting. But like Snorlax definitely is like a top tier threat. As look at that, go ahead and get predicted. No burns, no burns out here. Um, anyhow, let, let's go back to like what mods we can take from him. Uh, I'm not really too keen on Rotom Heat. It gives us a Pidgeot check, but I'd rather just pick up Empoleon. Uh, Gligar is kind of bad. Like it's it has great defenses, but it's just setup fodder for everything. We could get Chestnut. Azelf is mildly intrigued me, but I don't think it's that good of a mod. Um, so I feel like it's down to Shark, Arcanine, and Chestnut. I'll probably go Chestnut just because Chestnut can pull off a couple of cool sets. As uh, look at that, I'm three. I, every time I've clicked Sleep Talk, I've gotten rest. Uh, we're gonna see if we can continue that trend. I was about to add it, but I'm not gonna get that far ahead of myself. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, we are going for go, going for the sleep talk again. Snowlax kind of sums up. Oh, he synthesis. Haven't seen that in forever. Um, anyway, he just disconnects and has a minute to reconnect. So um, we're gonna go ahead and chalk that one up as a win. We're gonna uh, slap Chestnut into the team builder right here. Um, so we almost, hopefully by the end of this episode, we'll be able to pick up two more mods. But. Um, won the battle. I'm gonna go ahead and look for another one. Uh, I'll pause it until then, and uh, I'll be right back, guys. I'm back. Anyway, uh, we hit somebody using Ames team. I like. I just like have seen the team. Um, only watched a couple minutes of the video, so don't know everything about the team. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and lead Suicune. False. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and lead it with my Mamo Swine, uh, because Mamo actually does a lot of work versus team. Um, he has Suicune as his Mamo check. Which, you know, is, is good, but uh, he just leads off with Beedrill, which is fine. Um, I do have a 100% safe switch into this in Crobat. 
So I could probably go out to that. I'm not sure what is scarfed on this team, but as soon as I weaken Mandibuzz and weaken Suicune a little bit, I think I can just sweep him with uh, EQ via Crocodile. So Crocodile Scarf um, is actually kind of threatening. Um, I A lot of times I do prefer Black Glasses sets because you can like trap stuff and get up rocks and it's just a really versatile mon. A very very good pivot, almost a little Lando T-esque except it doesn't get U-turn which kind of holds it back but you know um, it's very very much in the it share it shares a lot with Lando T. Anyway, uh, right here I'm just gonna go out into Mamo and click Icicle Crash because I don't really think I lose anything by it. The obvious play for me is EQ. If he tries to get sneaky and go into Mandibuzz, then uh, it gon' die. Um, and as long as I hit my Icicle Crash, I think I'm okay. Because like getting Mandibuzz out of the way, like turn two would or turn three would be amazing if he does choose to play that risky. Although he has zero reason to. He goes into Suicune. Good play. Um, However, Suicune can't beat Snorlax 1v1. It cannot beat it. Um, his whole team loses, to, except for the fact that that's foul play, so that's mildly obnoxious. I'm just going to go into Rotomo, though. Uh, Rotomo, though. <laughs> and uh, I'm just probably going to click Leaf Storm. Uh, because if I can weaken Suicune, that is very, very nice. Uh, Suicune is a very, very big threat, though. Especially my team, because I don't have anything like a Heliolisk, which would otherwise be kind of cool. As he just goes for a Scald, which is fine. Um, I could Wisp here, because I don't feel like he's going to stay in. I feel like that's a really bad play if he stays in, um, because he doesn't want to take a Leaf Storm, even though I'm not, like, Life Orb or Scarf or, like, I have, like, the same, I'm actually stronger than Scarf, but not as strong as Life Orb. He goes into Nitto Queen, which is fine. Um, getting that thing statused is actually kind of nice, because it limits its Black Sledge recovery, um, means it can't stick around as long to check a lot of my stuff. And uh, I can probably just get away, get away with, get away with, go away with going, with going into Mamo right here. Um, despite the fact that it's a little risky, I can start firing off some EQs, and that is always nice because um, you know Mamo is like a god in this tier. <laughs> There's not really any two ways about it. But anyway, I'm just gonna actually I'm gonna go for the knockoff because I want to get rid of Suicune's uh, leftovers because then it's forced to rest more and gives more setup opportunities to stuff like Snorlax. And uh, also, you know, that, that like extra 12% can really help as he does indeed go into Suicune. 23% that did zero, so I know he is in fact max max. Um, however, your boy d still does have this here... Uh, this here Rotomo that I can just go into. At some point, uh, Nitto Queen won't appreciate switching into a Leaf Storm, which I'm kind of tempted to go for if I, when I go back out into Rotomo. Although his best play would probably be doubling into Beedrill because it does put a lot of pressure on my team. Um, he just ends up going for another Scald, which is fine. Uh, does get the burn, which is unfortunate, but uh, what's eating this Leaf Storm right here? Like he has a Manda Buzz, but uh, Rotomo actually has pretty neat coverage along with Rotom Heat. Um, the Rotoms in general just have great coverage, um, although I would appreciate it if this thing got, like, not dry skin, because that wouldn't fit, if it got, like, motor drive or something like that, to where, actually, Levitate is kind of nice, because it can pivot versus the Nidos pretty well. Anyway, uh, he ends up going out into Heliolisk right here, which is not going to appreciate a Leaf Storm from Rotomo, um, and I have zero switch-ins. Psych. We have uh, my dude Snorlax right here, which actually just crushes in his entire team. Um, but it's good that I got that damage off on Heliolisk because it's a lot less limiting now to... Uh, it's a lot less limiting... Ow, that actually kind of hurt. It's a, lot <laughs> it's a lot less limiting to Suicune later on in the game. I'm just going to go for the Body Slam right here because I have a feeling he'll just Volt Switch or something of the sort. And uh, body slamming isn't exactly horrible because you do have that para chance, which is always very nice. If he does a uh, volt switch into B drill, of course, not good for him. Um, Mandibuzz is going to be kind of a pain, but as long as I can weaken Suicune, then I think I'm okay. Because once I weaken Suicune, he's forced to use Mandibuzz as his pivot for Mamo and for stuff like. Crocodile, which, you know, is very, very, like, it is obviously beneficial to me. So, you know, we'll see what he decides to go for right here. He ends up going out into Nidoqueen, which, you know, is not a bad play, I don't think. Um, I'm just resting because you're not, I don't think you're max invested and you have Black Sludge. 
So, like, you obviously don't have as much, like, stopping power as offensive Ditto Queen. So you just end up going for T-Spikes, which is fine. Like, I have a Defogger. And at this point, I can just start uh, sleep-talking and go to work. <laughs> Snorlax is just, like, destroying people. Um, I, I need to make more teams around Snorlax, specifically Curselax. But I feel like it's a lot easier to build around than some other things. He just chooses to get up a second Toxic Spike. Um, I get Body Slam right there, which, like, I guess is okay because it helps me beat Mandibuzz a little bit better if I don't get a ton of curses right here. But I'd imagine we'll see... Is this Dragon Tail or something like that? Or Roar? Like, I know, like, it's not unheard of for them to run it, but yeah, that did zero. Um, I get a rest right there, which is fine because I can just curse and uh, limit Beedrill from coming in and just poison jabbing me or U-turning. Either way, um, if he goes into Beedrill as I'm... As I should be plus two, and I'm just gonna fire off a body slam because he can't knock me out. I can knock him out, and in general, it puts me in just a really good position. So he goes out in Amanda Buzz, um, probably just a whirlwind or whatever. If he defogs, I feel like that's a horrible play. But I'm gonna body slam because if I can para this, and like of course that's very very nice. Um, this team could use an electric type that's not Rotom. <laughs> Rotom is very nice. Like don't get me. yeah, he just goes for the taunt. Get out of here. There's there's my para. Um, if I can get a couple paras here, that I'm not gonna lie, that would be pretty beautiful. Um, Cause now I know he's taunt, defog, foul play, and roost. Meaning, like he's because I am because I do boost my defense as I boost my attack, then he's not gonna be able to just work me completely. That yeah, that did 30%. So looks like we're getting rid of Mandibuzz right here. Oh, hopefully, like I get a good roll or whatever, but. Snorlax is actually looking like he can do a little bit of wall breaking this game, which is really neat because if I can weaken, like, as I said earlier, once I get rid of Mandibuzz, it makes it a lot easier for Crocodile to come in and just spam EQ. Um, I do need to get these Toxic Spikes off the field. He goes into Nidoqueen, good sack, um, although not really sure how much that accomplishes because now I basically, once I defog, I can get rocks, which I should have put on Mammo. I'm going to go ahead and change that right now because I forgot I didn't have rocks anywhere else, so... Uh, where are you at? Rocks, rocks, rocks. Uh, we're gonna go and replace Knockoff for Stealth Rock because you know Mamo does force a lot of switches, and being able to get rocks up on the switch is a pretty nice skill. Um, he goes into Suicune right here, which is not really an issue at all. Um, I'm just gonna curse again. Like, <laughs> you don't scare me at all. Like, plus six Scald, I think, can two at KO, but um, I am of course a little bit ahead in this here war. And, uh, I'm feeling like I can just go to plus six because worst case scenario, I weaken him to the point where I can pick him off with Mamo because Mamo does like 36 to th or like 33 to 38 with EQ. So if, as long as I can weaken him to there, I can pick him off and then it's a wrap. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and see. Yeah. Nice crit skull, buddy. Now the question is, do I just body slam here, or do I... I'm kind of feeling a body slam, I don't feel like he's going to scald again. And this... Oh, he does scald again, he gets another crit, and a burn. Sick. Um, that's actually kind of bad, because if he crits me again, then... If he gets like a super high roll crit, he can knock me out, although... Wait, is he even Crocoon? Is he just like sub-CM? Sub-CM isn't like horrible. I, I don't feel like it's as good as its other sets, but, like, at the same time, it's not bad. I, I can just sleep talk right here, though, because even if he does try to go into Amanda Buzz and taunt, it is, if I get a body slam right here, that's really bad for him, because he's pretty much done for. And, uh, huh. Huh, huh, huh. He does end up going for the rest, so uh, we do know he is, in fact, Crocoon, unless he's just, like, rest, which, like, isn't horrible either. And that, of course, was my first sleep talk. I do get a uh, curse, which is super nice because at this point, like, at, at this point, I'm fairly certain it's game because there's nothing that can beat Snorlax and my Snorlax will beat his Suicune at the end of the day. Um, he does get a rest, which is nice. If I get a body slam, nice. Uh, we are two at KOing out here. Um, 
and this puts him in a really unfortunate position. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna body slam again because it forces him to rest, and then I can uh, curse on the following turn as he gets another rest, which is a little bit unfortunate as I just end up actually knocking him out because I completely forgot that I knocked off his leftovers earlier. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens right here. Because, like, I'm fairly certain he's about to hit that X button. Yeah, he just ends, ends up leaving. So, um, looking at his team, I'm I th I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and take either this thing or this thing. I'm going to go ahead and choose Nitto Queen. Um, I know I have a lot of poison types, but Nitto Queen is a very, very solid option. Um, because it does it can do a lot of things which is pretty important and right now we are about 20 minutes in I'm gonna go ahead and uh, find one more and uh, I will catch you guys then so guys I'm back and uh, this game is gonna be really hard for me to win <laughs> good news is is that he has regular arrow or regular B drill which is always nice for me um, I do think I'm gonna go ahead and lead Mamo swine though and my win condition is probably going to be um, your boy Crocodile, because Crocodile actually puts in a fair amount of work. I'm just going to go ahead and get my rocks up right here, um, because it does help wear down Beedrill, and I know he cannot knock me out with a U-turn, um, so doing that would be uh, ill-advised. I wouldn't be shocked to see him click Protect right here, which actually would be really nice, because then I can Ice Shard um, afterwards and bring him down to like 30-ish percent, and doing so would then... Be super helpful. Yeah, there we go. Because now he only has like one rock switch in. So even though I did end up basically foddering Mamoswine, uh, ended up actually really working out for me, which is very, very nice. Um, the biggest concern on his team for me is Cresselia, just because that thing is annoying and uh, don't really have anything to uh, beat it unless he's Psyshock and uh, not... Calm Mind or, or not he's clearly Calm Mind, uh, not Moon Blast. Anyway, I'm going to go for the Icicle Crash right here um, just because I know he can't knock me out with uh, the other move. Um, I, the Ice Shard as he just goes for the spin. Won't be able to knock me out, which is very nice for me. And I think I'm going to go straight out into Suicune on the Ice Shard, then double to um, then double to Crobat on the Roserade. That's the plan, because I don't see him staying in right here. If he does go into Gator, then he goes into Gator, and that's unfortunate, but either way, also I can win if he's Psy Shock, Cresselia, not Psychic. Um, yeah, so he goes into Roserade, ends up working out for me. I can just click U-turn right here, get some free momentum, and uh, time to get some buckets <laughs> as uh, he goes out into Cresselia, which, you know, is just straight obnoxious, although... It, is Snorlax going to win its third game today? Uh, that, that would be pretty special if that does indeed uh, happen. I'm going to go for the curse right here just because he, if he toxics, like, it's no big deal. And uh, I can just rest and then continue to fire off some body slams, hopefully, and uh, get off some curses. Anyway, we'll see what he decides to do. Is he ends up going for the T-Wave, which is fine. Uh, I do get my curse off, which is very, very nice. And I'm just going to fire off a body slam right here, because I feel like he would be that dude to try to go straight negator right here. And if I pair this, that's beautiful. Um, I also do have a pretty good collection of checks to gator. Um, being, like, Suicune can't really do much back to it, but... Uh, Rotom will outspeed it before a DD, and he is psychic, which, you know, um, is a little bit unfortunate, but I'm going to try to rest right here, Be and as long as I don't get paired, that's beautiful, because then I don't have to worry about being fully paired or anything like that um, on a turn where I would want to attack. He ends up going in arrow, which is fine. Um, like I c We live in. Uh, um, as long as he's not taunt. If he's taunt, that's really obnoxious, but I could see it, because it's probably like lead rocks arrow. Um is he just chooses to get up his rocks, so that's A-OK. -okay. Um, end up getting another curse out of this whole ordeal, which is very nice. Um, I do have Mammo, uh, which will die to rocks when it comes back in, um, but that can be remedied, of course. Um, is he Whirlwind? Is he really gonna Whirlwind? What is this set, bro? <laughs> I'm just gonna Volt Switch right here, um, and... I, I would hope he sacks this. I really feel like that's the play. Um, but Whirlwind Arrow, the, the ladder innovation. Let's take the really fast mod and give it the minus six priority move so that we can uh, do things that way. Anyway, so end up knocking him out. He doesn't know if I'm lefty. Actually, yeah, he does know that I'm lefty. It's unfortunate. 
Um, right here, I feel like I'm just going to go out into Crobat, because Crobat can do a decent um, amount to his team. Um, he's probably not Rock's Don fan, which is really nice, so as soon as I can defog, the better, um, because I can get Rock's up versus Cress, which is a little difficult, but it's not the end of the world. Anyway, I'm going for a uh, Uno defog right here, I think. Or should I just get damage? Um, I'm actually just gonna get damage right here, um, as kind of sad as that is. If he's SD, then I feel like Crunch is the better move to run. Um, that is the world's bulkiest gator, and he just knocks me out with an ice punch. So, you know, it's good I got damage, because I can just go out into Rotom right here. And, uh, I can click Willow relatively for free. There's not a whole lot he can do. Um, if he goes out into Roserade, I do have, uh, I do have a stop for that, which is my Snorlax. So Snorlax should theoretically just be able to put the team on its back right here and, uh, carry us to victory as he goes out into Cresselia, which is fine. Um, uh, missing the Willow is kind of lame, but not Volt Switch. I want a Willow again, um, because I want to get consistent damage on this Cresselia, um, does help in the long term, um, as he just ends up firing off a Psychic, gets a crit, which is a little bit unfortunate, um, because that really does hinder my ability to take Waterfalls from Gator, but I'm just gonna go ahead and Volt Switch right here. If he wants to try to go to Don Fan and show me who's in charge, so be it, but... Um, don't really think it's going to be that much of a problem because as soon as I go back into Snorlax, I can just start uh, sleep talking again and uh, hopefully get a W. So um, if I do win, I will take Gator. There's no question about it. Gator is honestly one of the best mons in the tier right now. Um, without a doubt, S rank. Um, if you don't have checks, you're losing to it. Um, although it's not really as popular as I feel like it should be, but you know whatever i'm just gonna go into snorlax right here um i'm not gonna be able to get rocks off the field but um i will say and I, which means i won't be able to get my own rocks up because mammo does have rocks which is a little bit unfortunate hp fire sick um anyhow we are sleep talking wait how many sleep talk turns do i have left uh there's one sleep talk okay um i'm actually gonna curse right here because it is my first turn um, or I will wake up on this turn, which is kind of nice as he goes out Negator, uh, meaning that as long as I get a favorable body slam roll, I think I'm okay right here. Um, in addition, as long as he's a DD, then I can pick him off with, uh, pick him off with your boy, uh, Crookedile, and Crook may actually be able to just carry it home, um, if I do get to plus one, because he did let his, uh, he did let his Cresselia get relatively weakened as he fires off a waterfall. That did a good amount, but um, unfortunately for him, I will be able to pick up the para right there, which is cool. Um, <sighs> Alright, I'm trying to think if I should sack Mammo then go out into... Yeah, I'm going to sack Mammo right here and then uh, go out into Crook and start spamming knockoff to win. Um... And this is like kind of a weird play because theoretically like I, I could just knock this out But I want to keep this thing relatively healthy um, I'm not actually sure if I outspeed because I am minus one speed at this point um, So I feel like it is my best play just to go ahead and sack Mamo. However, this guy's not making a move So we're gonna go ahead and pause it until uh, he gets back and I'll catch you guys then Anyway, um, I was able to pivot back out of Mammo, or back out into Mammo, which is good, as he just goes for the waterfall, so I think at this point, as long as plus one knock knocks out Roserade, then I think it's a game, um, in addition, as soon as he loses this, and I can weaken Roserade, Suicune also wins, so I do have three independent ways of winning, uh, hopefully he's not A-Jet, and if, if he is A-Jet, hopefully he gets a... Uh, it, it doesn't look like he had it, but I was gonna say hopefully he gets paired on the, uh, on the A-Jet. Anyway, we'll see what he decides to go out into right here. He doesn't know what set I am yet, so uh, it may not be necessarily safe. Or he may just try to pick me off with Beedrill, which would be preferred. As he goes into Donphan, which is fine. Um, the thing that I fear most from this thing is a knockoff, because getting rid of my scarf would be kind of lame. Um... I do get rid of his lefties as he goes for a toxic, so we live in. It's not even an issue, people, because um, I'm just, he's going to Ice Shard, get about like 25% off. Um, I'm going to take toxic damage. It'll be 37 this turn. Um, oh, that did a little more than I was expecting it to, but it's okay. Um, end up knocking him out. I'm at plus two now, and uh, he has to choose his fodder. Um, I get at least two more kills, which is very, very nice, um, so I can limit him to, like, basically, it will be his last mon versus three very fat mons for me so no matter what i think i can win right here um but we shall see what he decides to go out into because he has taken a while to make his moves or maybe it's just ps um yeah um he's gonna protect right here so i'm i'm about to read him like a book 
I'm going out into a uh, Rotom right here because th th there's the protect, and uh, I'm just gonna go straight away for a, a pain split because um, he will knock me out with whatever move, and uh, ends up going for the U-turn. That is perfectly fine. Um, basically, I got to reset the uh, toxic timer on Crook. Although, thinking back on it, it was probably better for me just to click knock right there, uh, take B drill out, and then just go from there. But anyway, I'm going to go into Snorlax right here because Snorlax does just clean up at this point um, as long as I don't get like, as long as I don't get triple crit or whatever. <laughs> um, or if he's like specs or if he's physical Rose Raid. Is physical Rose Raid even possible? And DT Rose Raid. Um, goes for the sleep powder. Actually a good play. Um, nah, that was 70 base attack. So, um, right here I'm just going for the sleep talk. I should be able to avoid the two at KO. And, uh, it's actually kind of an issue. I can lose now. Goes for the sludge bomb. Um, body slam, body slam, body slam. Rest. Nice. Um, right here I'm gonna predict, uh, predict my wake and go for a rest. Because, like, uh, two turns on sleep is, like, an average roll. Wake up. Look at that, sometimes I'm just too good at this game. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna go over the sleep talk right here and uh, hopefully knock him out because, uh, you know, uh, getting this Rose Raid off the field would be very nice. It means Suicune can sweep 100% of the time. Uh, he just ends up going for a Giga Drain, which is fine. That actually did a lot and he got all of his health back, but um, I can just not draw the right move to save, my, to save my life right now. I've gotten rest and rest. Uh, I, to be fair, I did get that pair with Body Slam earlier, so I guess it kind of makes up for it. Um, still a little salty about that uh, Roar Mega Arrow, or not Mega Arrow, just uh, Whirlwind Arrow, but it's okay. There is a curse. Okay. It's something. <laughs> um, I can just click rest right here, because there is no possible way that he can knock me out. And I know this part is a little bit slow, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, talk about a future project coming up. Um, in a couple of days, probably, uh, this dude named Dokes, who's really cool, um, one of my YouTube friends, he will be uploading a video to my channel, and I will be uploading a video to his channel. I will hopefully leave the link to his channel in the description below. Uh, so make sure to go and uh, drop a sub on his channel, check him out, so you guys can not only catch my episode, um, but to check out all the fun shenanigans he does on uh, his channel. Uh, his uh, showdown content is a little bit less serious than mine because like mine is like more serious and whatnot um, But he's still a very very good channel to go uh, check out so make sure to keep your eyes out uh, for that also um, Another LBA battle should be dropping tomorrow if I do get around to it as he just does end up forfeiting right there So I'm gonna go ahead and scoop up this gator real quick um, Assuming I don't already have it which I don't think I do I do not, so uh, looking like we get to add another water type, um, but you know, it's okay. And that's going to go ahead and wrap up today's episode of You Campaign. If you guys did enjoy, please make sure to leave a like, because it really does help show support for the stuff that I'm doing here on the channel. Also, make sure to answer today's comment question of the video, which is, when do you guys get out of school? Um, I, of course, am out right now, but with that, I urge you guys to subscribe if you guys are enjoying the constant content. And with that, I'll catch you on the flip-flop.